In this lecture, we are going to talk about overview of basic linear algebra. So we start with some basic definitions, then we talk about properties and functions in the uh, metrics and vector domain. So linear algebra, provides us with a way of compactly representing sets of linear equations. Right. For example, let's take a look at two linear equations, 2x1 plus x2 is equal to minus 5, 11x1 minus x2 is equal to 8. So if you want to show this set of equations in terms of matrices and vectors, then we can simply represent it as matrix A multiplied by vector of variables x is equal to vector B. So how do we determine matrix A? Matrix A in this case is 2, 1, 11, minus 1. And vector B is equal to minus 5, 8. And vector of variables is x1, x2. All right. So where did we determine these values? Two, one, 11, and minus one. For B, minus five, eight. And X1 and X2 are our variables. So as you can see, the first advantage is to represent this uh, expanded form in a very uh, compact and you know uh, in a very compact form that we can use for future computations. So let's just start with the definition of some basic defin basic notations. Uh, usually uh, in this uh, lecture and the future lectures, we represent matrices with a capital letter. For example, A is a matrix in R M by N. A is a matrix with M rows and N columns. And in this case, entries of A are real numbers. So this is definition of matrix. If you want to represent A, a is going to be a matrix. So uh, usually for the elements, this is A, row one, column one. A, row one, column two. A, row one, column A. A, row two, column one. A, row two, column two. And so on. And finally, A, row M, column one, A, row M, column two, and A, row M, column N. So this is an M by N matrix. It has M rows and it has N columns. So this is the representation of matrix A. There are a few other things. Sometimes you can represent each column of matrix A with a symbol. So this is equal to equivalent to A1, A2, A3, AN. So we show 
column J of this matrix by symbol A sub J or capital letter A J, which means all of the values in column J of this matrix. Another representation is representation by rows. So the show matrix A has its rows, A1 transpose, A2 transpose, A, M transpose. So and the notation for representing rows, row I of matrix A, either of these notations work, A sub I transform, transpose or capital letter A, I. All right. So all of these representations are equivalent for representing matrix A, which is M by N. The next definition is vector. So vector actually is a special case of matrix. So vector X in Rn, actually this is equivalent to having matrix A in Rn plus one. So this denotes a vector with n entries. By convention, an n-dimensional vector is often considered as a matrix with n rows. With n rows and one column. We also refer to this as column vector. All right, so uh, if we want to show this vector using the, our previous notation, so x1, x sub 2, and x sub n. And as you can see, this is also an n by 1 matrix because it has n rows and one column. So element i of this vector is represented as x sub i, element i of vector x. The next definition that uh, we want to talk about is matrix multiplication. All right, product of two matrices is represented, is referred to as matrix uh, multiplication. So let's say you have matrix A, which is M by N, and we have matrix B, which is N by P. We define C as their multiplication, which is A by B. And dimension of C is actually M by P. All right, so how can we find element ij of c? Sigma i from one to n, a sub ik, e sub kj. So there is another hint here, another uh, point to consider, and that's the dimensions of a and b. So if a is m by n, then we can only multiply A by B if B is also N by P. So what does that mean? In order for matrix product to exist, number of columns in A must be equal to the number of rows in B. That's exactly what uh, we represented here. 
And what's going to be the dimension of uh, their multiplication is going to be m by p. So the answer is m by p. So uh, the next definition that we want to talk about is vector vector product. Vector vector product. So there are two scenarios. Let's define two vectors, vectors x and y that are both n-dimensional. So we define two uh, vector products. The first one is called inner product. It's also referred to as dot product. So what's inner product? Inner product for these two vectors x and y is x transpose y, which is a scalar. So it's x1, x2, xn multiplied by y1 to yn. So this is equal to an scalar with value of xi, yi, i from 1 to n. So this one is going to be multiplied by y1, x2, y2, and so on, xn, yn. And then we sum the way. So actually, the inner product is basically a special case for metric, matrix multiplication. It's like you have matrices A and B, where matrix A is 1 by n, matrix B is n by 1. So matrix C, which is the answer, is 1 by 1. And another thing to notice here for inner product is x transpose y is equal to y transpose x for inner product only. All right, uh, the next definition in the vector vector products is outer product. So given two vectors, x, which is m dimensional and y, which is n dimensional. So uh, at this point, x and y, are not necessarily the same size. So for the inner product, x and y should be the same size. But for outer product, x and y are not necessarily the same size, of the same size. So uh, if we have this x and y, so x is basically m by one and y is n by one. So we define x y transpose which is m by n dimensional this is called outer product of vectors x and y so each element of this uh, this uh, outer product or this matrix let's say element ij is xi multiplied by y sub j. And let's uh, write the expanded version. x1, x2, xm multiplied by y1, y2, yn. So this is m by 1, this is n, this is 1 by n. So the answer is going to be m by n. And what are the elements? x1, y1, x1, y2, x1, y n, x sub 2, y sub n, x sub 2, y sub n, x sub 2, y sub n, and x sub m, y sub 1, x sub m, y sub 2, x sub n, y sub n. 
Uh, now we are going to talk about the third type of uh, metrics uh, multiplications, which is matrix vector products. So as we mentioned in vector vector product, this is also a subset of a special scenario of matrix multiplication where we have matrix A, which is N by N, and so this is matrix A. And we have vector X, which is n dimensional. The product, we represent the product as Y is equal to A multiplied by X, which is M dimensional. There are a few ways of looking at matrix vector representation, matrix uh, vector multiplication. So uh, the first one is simply say y is equal to a, which is n by n multiplied by x, which is n by one. So the answer is going to be y, which is m y by one. So we can find each element of y. The other way is to represent a as its rows. So y is equal to a x, first row of a, second row of A, mth row of A, and then X. So we basically can multiply this row to X, this row to X, this row to X, which is going to be their inner product. So the answer is A1 transpose X, A2 transpose X, AM transpose X. So if I, if I want to explain this uh, uh, with some sentences, it means the i's entry of y is equal to inner product of i's row of matrix A and vector x. So y i or element i of vector y is equal to i row of the matrix inner product x. Let's look at another alternative. What if we represent matrix A with its columns, not with its rows? In that case, y is equal to a x. So now uh, I'm going to show matrix A by its uh, columns, column one, column two, column three, and column n. And we have x1, x2, xn. All right. So uh, what will happen here? We are going to have x1, which is the first element of X is an scalar multiplied by the first column, X2, second column, Xn, nth column. So in other words, Y is a linear combination of columns of A, where the coefficients of the linear combination are entries of x. Let's review this one more time. Y is a linear combination of columns of A where the coefficients or entries of X. So now that uh, I use the term linear combination, let's review the definition of linear combination. So uh, in mathematics, a linear combination is an expression which is constructed 
from a set of terms by multiplying each term by a constant coefficient. and then adding the results. So those terms could be vectors, could be matrices, could be any element. But the coefficients, this is the key factor or constant coefficients. Uh, a simple example is linear combination of a scalar x scalars x and y. So it's going to be ax plus by, where x and y, a, a and b are constants. It can happen for vectors. Linear combination of, let's say, vectors x1, x2, and x3. So we can represent it as a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus a3 x3. So again here, a1, a2, and a3 are constants. And another example could be linear combination of matrices. Let's say I have matrix A, which is M by N, and I have matrix B, which is also M by N. So one possible linear combination of these uh, two matrices is 4A plus 2B. What does that mean? That means first multiply A by constant factor 4, then multiply each element of B by constant factor 2, and then sum these up. This is called linear combination. So this is a generic notion. You can use it for scalars, vectors, and matrices. So, so far now we have a general idea of the basic definitions of matrices and vectors, their multiplications. Now uh, we want to discuss a few basic properties of uh, matrix multiplication. basic properties of matrix multiplication. First, matrix multiplication is associated. So what does that mean? That means matrix A multiplied by matrix B multiplied by matrix C is equal to A multiplied by B by C. The second property, matrix multiplication is distributive. What does that mean? A multiplied by B plus C is equal to A multiplied by B plus A multiplied by C. Another important property is matrix multiplication is in general not commu commutative. So for example, A multiplied by B is not necessarily equal to B multiplied by A. Especially this happens uh, when uh, matrix A and B are, are not having the same dimensions. For example, A is M by N and B is N by P. And we are sure that M is not equal to P. In this case, A, B exists. Why? Because we have A, M by N, we have B and by P. So AB's dimension 
is m by p. Let's take a look at b a. b a is b, which is m by p. Its dimension is m by p, and a, which dimension is m by n. So as you can see, it even doesn't exist because m is not equal to p. So b a does not exist. So that's why, in general, matrix multiplication is not commutative. Uh, we can also verify these properties. For example, let's uh, try to verify the associativeness of matrix multiplication. Associativeness of A, B, C. We want to see why this is equal to A, B, C. All right, let's define uh, three matrices. A, which is M by N, B, which is N by P, and C, which is P by Q. Why do we choose this, this dimension, these dimensions? Because these two should be equal, and these two, two should be equal to make this a physical, a physical uh, multiplication. So we start with definition of A, B, C, we want to see what's the element IJ of this matrix. So we consider this as one matrix, AB as one matrix, and C as another matrix. So K from one to P, AB, which is one matrix, IK multiplied by C, KJ. Now what we are going to do, we are going to expand AB here. So we repeat. Sigma, this is 2p. K from 1 to p, sigma, L from 1 to n, A, I, L, B, L, K, C, K, J. Now what we are going to do, we are going to bring C inside this parenthesis. So we have sigma, K one to P, sigma L one to N, A I L, B L K, and C K J. All right. At the next step, what we are going to do, we are going to switch these uh, summations. We will have sigma L from one to N, sigma K from one to P, A I L. B, L, K, and C, K, J. All right, what does this mean? At the next step, I'm trying to bring B, C, the multiplication of B and C outside. So, as you can see, K only exists in these two. So this sigma applies to these two. I'm going to bring A sub L outside of this. Let's see what happens next. We have sigma, L from one to N, A, I, L, Sigma, K from P to N, B, L, K, C, K, J. So this is a simply nothing but element L, J of multiplying B and C. So this is equal to Sigma, L from one to N, A, I, L, B, C, L, J which is A multiplied by B, C, I, J. So we started from A, B multiplied by C, and we proved that it's equivalent to A multiplied by B, C. This is nothing but the associated property of matrix multiplication. So this is all for this lecture. In this lecture, we talked about definition, definitions of vector and matrix. We talked about their multiplication, multiplication, matrix, matrix multiplication, vector, vector multiplication, which has both inner product 
and outer product. And we finally talked about matrix vector multiplication. After this, we talked about properties of matrix multiplication. 